Hi, welcome to the Cisco Knowledge Base. I am Sudhir. I work for Cisco High Touch Technical Support Team. Hi, my name is Raj Bhatta. I work for High Touch Technical Support Group in Cisco. Today we will talk about CRS1 system architecture. In this module, we will be talking about few different topics. First, we will talk about the CRS box and then its chassis options. We will also discuss CRS1 system configuration. Then we will walk through CRS1 common components like route processor, alarm card, line card and fan controller. At last, we will go through the high speed switch fabric and also demonstrate how a packet flow inside a CRS box. Cisco CRS1 is a highly scalable at industry first multi chassis router in which we can scale from 1 to 72 chassis all operating as a single system. In terms of switching speed, a 16 slot fully loaded chassis can process 1.2 dbps data. It runs IOS XR microkernel based operating system and provides industry leading QoS features throughout the forwarding path. So let's understand what is the CRS. CRS1 routing system is the industry's first carrier router offering continuous system operation, unique service flexibility and system longevity. The CRS1 offers revolutionary capabilities all combined on a machine that is vastly more powerful, more expandable, more intelligent. CRS1 system architecture combines the Cisco silicon packet processor, the first programmable 40 Gbps application specific integrated circuit with the Cisco service separation architecture for unique service flexibility and speed to service. Most importantly, CRS1 is a system rather than an individual router. Unlike typical routers, the CRS1 is a highly distributed and modular machine. Its basic building block is a chassis that can process 1.2 TBPS of data. But then additional chassis can be seamlessly added to expand the machine to as much as 92 TBPS of capacity. Okay, uh, so here we see the CRS chassis options. On the left, we uh, see CRS 16 slot chassis. 16 slot is in its own rack, so it's not rack mountable. 8 and 4 are rack mountable chassis. As you see in table, placement of RP, MSC and PLIM according to the chassis. RP is a route processor, MSC is modular service card and PLIMS are physical layer interface modules. We will discuss each component in details. Another chassis options we have is called multi chassis. With multi chassis what we gonna do, we combine multiple line card chassis into one logical system. This means you can have, for example, four or five line card chassis combined together where you run a single instance of BGP. You only have one login. You only have one forwarding table. This way, this is a way to scale a much higher number of interfaces for maintaining the one control plane. One of bigger advantage of multi chassis over traditional way of building big set of router is multi chassis connects via the switch fabric. So rather than using expensive ports, we use switch fabric to connect multiple chassis. We can club 2 to 72 line card chassis in multi chassis configuration. Okay, so let's now take a look of CRS4 in a, a little closure view. So we start over here from left and the right. These are the modular service card. These card do the packet forwarding operations. If you look at the center, these are physical layer interface module. They provide different physical interface like POS, modular service card or ethernet card. These card always paired with MSC via backplane. Next we see a route processor. A route processor does the job of 
administering the system so it's build the forwarding table and send those to line card one more rp is available in the system for redundant purpose if you look at the back of the system these are the switch fabric cards depending on the chassis we may have four or eight switch fabric cards but they always gonna perform same function which is moving cells through the router okay so this is a diagram showing front and rear view of 16 slot fully loaded chassis also you can see the placement of various components on front side we have power shelf which contains two alarm cards and power supplies here we have upper plim card cage which contain eight plims and two fan controller cards lower plim card cage have two rps in middle and eight plims rear side on the upper cage we have eight mscs and four switch fabric card similarly on the lower cage okay so in coming slides you now we'll discuss all the three types of chassis and their components in details okay so let's understand the crs 16 slot chassis the front side of chassis is plim side at the top of chassis are two power shelves each with three power supplies and one alarm module it has two plim bays upper and lower the upper bay has eight plim slots and two fan controller the lower bay has eight plim slots and two route processor slots at the bottom of the chassis is the air intake grill the back side of chassis is the modular service card it has two eight slot msc bays as well the upper bay has eight msc slot and four half height sfc which is switch fabric card the lower bay hold an addition eight msc and four half height switch fabric card a fully loaded 16 slot line card chassis supports a data throughput rate of 1.2 terabits per sec okay so let's talk about crs 8 slot chassis the 8 slot line card chassis is a half height chassis and it allows to be installed in standard racks line card and plims are the same for both the 16 slot chassis and 8 slot chassis like the 16 slot chassis the 8 slot chassis contains a mid plane that interconnects the rps modular service cards and plims the rps and switch fabric cards in 8 slot chassis are physically different size than rps and sfc of 16 slot chassis which is switch fabric card the front side of chassis is referred to as a plim physical layer interface module side it has eight plim slots and two route processor slots the lower section of the houses to power entry modules it's a pems the back side of chassis is also referred to as a modular service card side it has eight msc slot and four sfc slot switch fabric slots A fully loaded 8 slot line card chassis supports a data throughput rate of 640 Gbps per second. Okay, now let's explore the 4 slot line card chassis. The 4 slot line card chassis is a half height. Uh the 4 slot line card chassis is a half height chassis and it allows to be installed in standard racks. It supports four modular service card, four plims, two RPs, and four switch fabric cards msc and plims are the same for all crs1 line card chassis like the 16 and 8 slot chassis the four slot chassis contains a mid plane that interconnects the rps modular service card and plims the front of the chassis contains four modular service card four plim cards and two route processor card four fabric cards are placed at the back of chassis the mid plane connects the line card to their associated plim the fan tray contains fan then push and pull air through the 
chassis. A removable air filter is located above the power shelf in the front of the chassis. A fully loaded 4 slot line cut chassis supports data throughput rate of 320 Gbps. Okay, so the next slide we're gonna talk about modular service card and PLIM. We will discuss these in uh, more details, but just a high level overview. You know, uh, MSC job is to forward the packets. That means looking up the destination, whether MPLS, IPv4, IPv6, doing the feature that needs to be done, like per packet ACL cost, etc. On the other hand, PLIM provides the physical interface for the routing system. A physical layer interface module provides the packet interfaces for the routing system. Optic modules on the PLIM contains ports to which fiber optic cables are connected. User data is received and transmitted through the PLIM ports. In addition, PLIMs perform functions such as framing, clock recovery, serialization and deserialization, channelization and converted between the optical signals. The MSC provides layer 3 services for the user data and the PLIM provides layer 1 and layer 2 services. So we will uh, you know, we'll talk about each and every component here. Uh, for MSC and plane. The MSC includes a CPU module to handle control plane functions. The CPU is involved in MSC configuration, management protocol control and exception packet handling. SP which is a service processor. So SP controls card power up, environmental monitoring and Ethernet communication with the chassis RP boards. We have a PSE components here as well, so which is a part of MSC. So it resides on the MSC is the primary L3 feature processing ASIC. The PSE applies feature such as ACL checking, URPF, BGP, PA, as well as cost function such as policing and red to the traffic stream. There is there is one. PSC in the RX path and another in the TX path. Now let's talk about ingress queue and egress queue. Ingress queue is the RX queuing ASIC, egress queue is the TX queuing ASIC and both reside on the MSC. Each of these ASICs implements feature such as P2 MDRR, low latency queuing and shaping support. In addition, the ingress queue contains fabric queues and the packet to fabric cell conversion functionality. Okay, let's talk about fabric queue. The MSC contains two of fabric queue ASICs in the transmit path from the fabric towards the plane. The fabric queue reassembles the fabric cells and convert these back to full packets. Although each ASIC contains queuing functionality and provide low latency precedence based queuing. These queues are not directly configurable. Okay, so this is the complete overview of MSC and PLIM via mid-plane connectivity. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, these are the components of MSC uh, which we already discussed in detail. Uh, this is root processor functional overview. Uh, the root processor card is a system controller. It performs route processing and distributes forwarding table to the MSCs. The RP provides a control path to each MSC, performs system monitoring functions and contains hard disk for system and error logging. Although the routing system contains two RP cards, only one RP is active at a time. The other RP operates in a standby mode, ready to resume control if the active RP fails. The RP card provides route processing, alarm, fan and power supply control functions. The RP card control controllers control fans, 
alarm and power supplies through the use of I2C communication link from the RP card to each fan tray and power supply. So here is the architecture of route processor which you can see this is a simple block diagram of an RP in this drawing we have CPU and memory controller and two fabric and fro from fabric modules. CPU performs the function of a service processor similar in the MSC and monitors the RP's temperature and voltages. We have management port connectivity to, uh, to network for system management. Internal fast uh, Ethernet mid-plane connections. Each line MSC in a JC connects to a both RP via internal 100 Mbps FE connection. There are also FE connections to the fan blowers and power supplies. These connections all are from control plane. An ID hard disk provided and used for gathering debugging information such as core dumps from the RPs or MSCs. Two PMCI flash slots for 1GB flash storage are provided. The RP connects with the line card chassis through mid plane and to connect through the switch fabric the RP has interfaces from fabric and to fabric. From fabric module is a part of the receive path of the RP. The RP from fabric module queues the data from the switch fabric. It also re reorders and reassembles the cells into packets before queuing them to fabric module. Two fabric module is a part of the transmit path on the RP. The two uh, fabric module queues the packets and segments them into cell before transmitting them to the switch fabric. We have a FPGA which handles system control register functions such as identifying which plims are installed, RP master shift signals, card present signals, card reset signals to cards which uh, SP. In addition, the FPGA handles the front panel alphanumeric display and active LED and OK LEDs. So next is a fan controller's overview. The basic function of fan controller is to provide monitoring and control for fan trays. The fan controller has a service processor running software which takes care the DC input voltage of to individual fans to control their speed as per the requirement. Also monitor the cooling system and this monitoring increase or decrease the airflow needed to keep the routing system operating in a desired temperature range. At least one fan controller must be operational for the system to be up and running. If both fan controller fails, system will be shut down. Next is alarm module. Alarm module monitors the status of uh, power self and, uh, and provide an external interfaces for system alarms. There is a dedicated alarm module slot on the right side of the every power shelf in CRS116 slot chassis. The alarm module contains a service processor to drive the display and provide control network connectivity. It displays environmental and other hardware alarms and faults for example, power supply burn, burns out and a minor alarm will be displayed at the alarm LED. In normal operations, ISXR appears in the LED. Okay, so now we will discuss more about switch fabric card. As we discussed about MSC, MSC's job is to forward the packets to destination. Each MSC distributes data cells to each switch fabric plane. Fabric in CRS system uses Benz switch fabric architecture. We have three types of uh, switch fabric card. S123 card, S13 card and S2 card. S123 card is used of single shelf system and S13 and 12 cards used by multi shelf system. Here we will talk about only single shelf system. The S123 switch fabric card is used only in single chassis system there are 8 or 4 S123 switch fabric cards depending on the chassis type. Each card consists of all three stages S1, 2 and S3 of the three stage band switch fabric. 
In coming slides, we will understand the fabric stages and packet flow via switch fabric. As I mentioned earlier, each MSC distributes data cells to each switch fabric planes. So, what is cell? So here, here is the breakup of uh, cells shown in the figure. Packet are segmented into cells by MSC cards and distributed to switch fabric. So switch fabric cards job is to forward the cells. So the size of the cell is 136 bytes. It contains 12 byte header, 120 byte payload and 4 byte CRC. So let's understand three stage switch fabric. As we discussed shell header when the packet is converted into Cisco cells, S1 stage element receives data cells from the MSC or from an RP and distribute them to the S2 stage. S1 switches cell streams load balancing across the two S2 SX. S2 queues and routes the cell to the correct S3 based on the shell header. S3 queues the routes, queues and routes the cell to the correct fabric queue based on the cell header. So here is the packet flow summary. As you see, IP packet received on the plane. Finally, uh, MSCs is going to uh, chop this IP packet into cells and cell will accordingly uh, push to switch fabric. As you see, uh, three uh, different uh, switch fa fabric stages, S1, S2 and S3. Via the mid plane, it received via other end MSC. And again, uh, cell are combined into IP packet and forwarded via plane. Okay, so let's understand how packet flow packet flows in CRS1 system. So the framer on the plane receives a frame carrying the IP packet. The framer ASIC perform the appropriate SONET, SDH, Ethernet, deframing, decapsulation and removes the CRC. An internal buffer header is added that accompanies the packet throughout the router. The buffer header carries additional information that is not available from the packet itself, such as the ingress physical and logical port, frame type, packet type, the interface on which this packet was received. The RX PAC performs the destination, lookup and ingress feature processing such as access list, cost collect classification, policing, red per queue, policy routing. The packet is passed to ingress queue ASIC. The ingress queue ASIC performs shaping and packet to packet modified deficit round robin on the packet as well as the segmentation of packet into cells for transmission across the switch fabric. Now cells are sent into the fabric. The cells arrive at stage 1 of the switch fabric. The S1 simply distributes the incoming cell across available S2 stages within the plane. The S2 stage perform a lookup on the cell header to determine which S3 ASIC within the plane the cell is to be sent to and forward to S3. The S3 stage receives the cell and using the cell header determines which fabric queue ASIC the cell is to be sent and then forward to fabric queue of MSC. The cells arrive from the fabric onto one of the two fabric queue ASICs. The cell arrive from fabric onto one of two fabric queue ASICs. All the cells from a single packet are received by the same fabric queue ASIC. The packet will be placed into the appropriate queue based method. 
upon the information contained in the buffer header assignment to the packet the packet is passed to the txpsc the txpsc performs full layer 3 processing including destination address lookup which is a route lookup as well applies the appropriate egress feature to the packet such as access list processing qs classification red the packet is now passed to the egress queue asic which places the packet in the appropriate queue before shaping and packet to packet modified deficit round robin are applied once the packet has been queued and shaped it is then passed to the pla asic on the plim finally the packet is sent through the egress port and on to the physical link so this is end of the session now and i hope this has been informative to you and i would like to thank you for